not create jobs for everybody. Right? Everybody knows, everybody accepts, and everybody says it when things are good. The private sector is the driver of our economy. The private sector it must be the engine of growth in our economy. The role of the government is to create the conditions that make it easy for people to do business. That's what these business reforms are about. That's why the World Bank has looked to see how easy it is for people to do business and has improved, given us an improved ranking. The role of the private sector is to invest and to create the job opportunities. So we can undertake the public sector investment program. The private sector must undertake their own plans, their own business plans and development. And I think it is safe to say that um, government is doing its part. In other news, poverty is real, but it is not invincible. That's the encouragement given to participants who are about to embark on a six-month training under the Poverty Reduction and Capacity Building for Rural Women in Grenada program. It's funded by the Organization of American States and executed by Grencoda. GIS was there to cover the launch of the program and filed this report. The formal opening of the program was held at the Caribbean Plaza in Cites on Monday evening to mark what organizers call the beginning of a long, fruitful journey. Poverty Reduction and Capacity Building for Rural Women program is aimed at enhancing the skills among rural women in an effort to reduce poverty not just for themselves and their family, but Grenada on a whole. Grenada's last poverty assessment report showed an increase over the years with 32% of the nation poor in 1998 to 37.7% in 2008. The report also showed that in addition to the 37.7%, there is another 14.6% that is vulnerable. This is further compounded by the global financial and economic crisis, which puts another 15% at risk of falling into the poverty bracket. Above all, women have been identified as most affected. For this reason, the government of Grenada sought funding from the Organization of American States to undertake the project that will be supervised and executed by Grencoda. It will cover three main components, information and communication technology, practical skills training, and a small business development. General Secretary of Grencoda Judy Williams told participants that though the statistics are alarming, there is hope for them. Poverty is real, but it is not invincible. History and reality has shown that for a lot of us, a lot of us who you see today and you might admire and say, maybe I like to see this lady, I like to see this man, I like the car he's driving, I like the clothes they're wearing, I like the house they're living in. For a lot of us, that was not where we came from. This course this afternoon that we are launching this afternoon, therefore, is an opportunity for you as women to build capacity, to get skills, to get training that will enhance whatever you already have and to give you new skills that you may not have as yet that would allow you to have options that will remove you from poverty elsewhere. Women rights activist and advocate Elaine Henry McQueen delivered a feature address at the ceremony. Ms. McQueen stated that the program is in line with the government's thrust to create not just jobs but sustainable developmental skills that will create careers. This program is not about giving you a handout and giving you some money to buy the food today or giving you, having some fishermen catch fish and sharing all the fish, the fish for you today. And when the fish done, you're hungry again. No, this program is about teaching you how to process the fish, for example, as one of the programs, one of the skill components is. So it is going to teach you to process the fish so that you can buy from the fishermen, process the fish, and sell the fish to earn an, uh, an income, to add value to the fish, so that it, whether fish is in season or out of season, you might have processed enough fish so that you can sell to people later on. 
And it is a skill that you have, and if you put it into good use, you have it for life. You can have it to start a business. You can have it to start to teach other persons in your family and create a family business for it. The program will conclude in June 2011 with a graduation and award ceremony for participants. The Child Welfare Authority says it's ready to take on new challenges and responsibilities as mandated by the Child Protection Act. The Child Protection Bill was approved by the House of Representatives two weeks ago. It gives the authority greater power and tools to fight on behalf of abused children and also makes the authority the umbrella body that will take up matters of child protection by merging with the arm of the Ministry of Social Development and Action for Children. Added to that, the name of the authority will change to Child Protection Services. Director of the authority, Chris Davies, says her organization is ready for the change and will do what's necessary to effectively carry out its functions. The Child Welfare Authority will then take on the mantle of being the Child Protection Agency for Grenada, Karakumpti, Martinique, which has huge implications. You know, we'll, be, we'll, be, we'll have the entire mandate for children's services because we're also taking on the fostering service from Action for Children, and that incorporates adoption. So, you know, the care of children in the nation will then become ours totally. It is a huge responsibility, but we're also really excited because it means that it's, it's then can be more coherent. You know, the, the service so far has been split between three agencies, social development, child welfare, and action for children. And now the three services will be combined under child welfare, which we hope, you know, and we will work very hard towards making it a more coherent service one where people can you know have some have some more not that they didn't have faith before but a bit more faith in things working a bit more smoothly than they did before Ms. Davies pointed out that the new legislation gives the organization a larger platform to fight on behalf of children in legal matters we are pleased that they passed some legislation that gives us a bit more room to maneuver in the work that we do. Not that there was, you know, I'm not criticizing the old legislation, but it was limited, you know, in that it only gave us one kind of order that we could use in the courts against perpetrators. The new legislation actually gives us a series of orders that we can use at different times as we may require. So that's, you know, that's very good news. The Child Welfare Director warned that players in the field should not just rejoice at the new leg legislation, but must now begin to implement and enforce the law for the protection of the nation's children. We have masses of legislation in Grenada which isn't implemented. So we have to take this piece of legislation extremely seriously. And as you've said, you know, we've all been part of this lobby for more than 10, 15 years to try and get some coherent legislation to be implemented in Grenada. So now we have to walk the walk. You know, we've been talking the talk for a very long time. Now we have to walk the walk and we have to put our money where our mouth is. And again, that's a call for, you know, financial support. It can't be done with, without financial support. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back after the break. My wife was always getting on my case about smoking. She said, it's bad for you. It makes the drapes smell. She even threatened to stop kissing me if, if I didn't quit. I said, it's my lungs and it's my life. But I was wrong. I didn't quit. I had no idea the life I'd lose wasn't mine. It was hers. She was my life. My wife was my life. <laughs>
welcome back viewers. Senior human resource officers within the public service are preparing themselves for the implementation of a new initiative called the Performance Based Pay Program. On Tuesday, a ceremony was held to open a two-day workshop that will train officers to implement and execute the project. Details in this report. In 2002, a project proposal was submitted to the Caribbean Development Bank to fund a program that deals with pay and grade of public workers. This was approved and as a result, consultants from KPMG out of Barbados were contracted to undertake a project in two phases. The first phase looked at identifying anomalies in the existing pay and grade structure and to conduct a salary survey with OECS private and public sectors so as to compare those with that of Grenada. In the second phase, KPMG consultants had to come up with alternative structures and develop enumeration policies for the public sector. During the assessment study, it was found that there is an insufficient linkage between performance and pay in the public sector. To remedy the problem, PKMG recommended what they call a pay-for-performance system to be implemented. In so doing, the two-day workshop was set up here for senior human resource officers within the public service to train them to implement and manage the proposed system. This would be pay for individual performance. We are at the stage now where the Pay and Grade Committee, this is a committee consisting of representatives of various government departments as well as the Police Association, Prison Association, Fair Association, the Teachers Union, etc. They were established to actually monitor and steer the project. So one of the recommendations that they have accepted is a performance-based payment system. Of course, all this still has to be ratified by the cabinet. We did a presentation to the cabinet yesterday, so it still has to be ratified. The training that we're going to be conducting over the next two days actually represents the last step in the process for KPMG. So over the next two days, we'll be conducting this training. You have been selected to be the trainers for the remainder of the public sector. Congratulations. It's not going to be an easy task, but I'm sure you would not have been selected if they did not think that you were up to it. I don't know how many of you have conducted training before, but just let me tell you that you're going to need to draw on all your knowledge, skills, attributes in order to get the training rolled out. But you will get it done. Keep.